Our state has some incredible problems. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. I'm here to talk about that with you and talk about the trends that have shaped this state and dragged us in one direction or another. We're not really doing what, we're not realizing the dream we had way back in the early 2000s or even around 2008 or 9 or 10. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. Welcome to Wild Biz Nebraska. We're going to get it on right now. Have you ever witnessed the birth of a long-awaited baby? Think about the the joy and the potential that is kind of radiating all around you and everybody else if you're in the operating room and we get a brand new baby and it, it implies there's so many cool new things coming as a result of that. Well, tonight, you're going to watch the birth of a new baby. That's right. A brand new product or service, I guess, that's being offered to Nebraska business owners around the state. It's called Future Force. It's a great word, future force, and it implies that there is a new way to come at workforce development, attracting employees, recruiting, building, training, getting them to feel passionate and engaged about their jobs and your company and so on. Future force is the next big thing here in the world of Nebraska and, and the workforce development, and this has been a big issue, okay? <laughs> For some time, it's becoming increasing, and then, of course, Gallup uh, recently published a, uh, a book recently called Blind Spot that confirmed what we all know anyway, which is that workers, and in their case around the world, but here in the state of Nebraska, are unhappy to a large degree. They're, they don't feel fully uh, used. Uh, they don't necessarily feel like they're going forward in their careers. And uh, they don't necessarily have good friends uh, among the rest of the workforce and so on. So they drift away. And then you have to spend anywhere between $1,500 and $15,000, depending on their position, of course, to replace them. It's a big drain on, uh, on finances. And it can really demoralize the rest of the, uh, the rest of the team. So future force can solve, I believe, all of those problems. Now, Future Force is a paradigm. It's a, it's a way to think about uh, organizational development. It's a way to think about employee culture. By the way, let's just come out and say it. There's very few companies that actually have a culture that they're proud of. Something that, I mean, it may emerge over time and it kind of is this, it's a little bit that. But to construct a fully built culture that attracts people to say, I heard you guys were working over there. How is I hear good things. I might go apply over there. I might want to go work over there. I hear good things about it, right? This is where we want to go. And, um, you know, nine out of ten organizations in this state and, and most other states um, want to go there as well. So I'm going to talk to you for the next few minutes about Future Force. And we have a new, by the way, a new uh, sponsor. Um, and we're going to be uh, pitching a book or booklet, if you will. Uh, during the promotional segment of our, of our show here. I'm Lynn Hitherocker with Wild Biz Nebraska. Some of you know that, and all of you do now. So we're going to talk about future force. And then on the back end of our show, we're going to be discussing trust. And what is the purpose of trust, and who do you trust, especially when you're going to spend money, have a vendor, some resource, somebody's going to come into your world. You're going to probably spend some money with them. How do you really Find out the, the organization that you want to work with. We're going to talk about that on the back end of the show, and I think you'll find that very intriguing and, and entertaining. So let's talk about Future Force. It, 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 it weaves together eight principles, all right, eight general ideas, and uh, as you work your way through them, by the way, many of these ideas um, are relevant to management as well as to, uh, to workers, hourly workers or whatever, salaried staff, whatever they are. So uh, this is a fully integrated idea. So we'll take, take it by, uh, by points, eight points as I mentioned. The first point, probably has to be the first point, is when you have your people around you, whether you're talking individually or in a group situation, whatever, you have to repeatedly point to the destination. <laughs> Where are we attempting to go? And, and why? Okay, this is a really fundamental issue, but you would be surprised at how few employees really know where is the company attempting to go? What are we attempting to become? 
How are we going to evolve and morph and change if we, in fact, get there? What am I supposed to role am I supposed to play uh, in the, that journey? So anyway, we've got to make sure that people feel good about the destination. This is exciting. When we get to that, we're all going to maybe make more money or have more fun or whatever it is. Point to the destination and do so often. Number two, during change periods, <laughs> avoid ambiguity, script Script the critical moves. Now, we are in a change period. There's no doubt about this. Some people are still struggling with the implications of uh, the pandemic and so on. Other people are worried about the uh, uncertain economy. Some people are concerned about inflation. Uh, the commercial real estate industry is very concerned. They call this difficult times, you know. So <clears throat> this, is a, this is a very interesting period. So it's really important when employees work together and there is this kind of transitional fluid period where we're not really sure what the company's priorities are. We're kind of doing this, we're kind of doing that, depending on what department uh, you're operating in. So what you need to do is script the critical moves, right? It's just like an actor going on camera. Uh, if, if he or she hasn't had time to practice his or her script, it can be a little off. It can be a little rough. It can't have that. And the same thing goes for the situation in any employee thing. They have to know, I'm under pressure over here. I'm behind. The whole schedule is behind. I need help. Boom, boom, boom. Gotcha. I'm with you. Here's what we're going to do right now to get you going back, get you back up to speed or whatever. So uh, script those critical moves. Number three, create a culture. And I'm going to talk about this, where everyone knows exactly how to behave during tense or extra effort situations. Now, I've, I've mentioned this kind of as well, but I actually know some people that walk around now, they walk around with a little booklet. And when somebody in the organization says something, maybe it's off color or it doesn't fit into the groove or whatever, they can kind of look at this, right? And they know exactly how we behave here, all right? There is a socialization element. There is a values or ethics element. Um, this is the kind of organization we are. We're energetic. Uh, we're empathetic. If somebody has a, a bad day, uh, we're expected to come over there and give them some support or not. See, that's the critical issue. So you're going to have some interesting meetings sitting around saying, well, what is our, what is our value system? What do we believe in? And, and how, can, how are we supposed to behave when things are unusual or somebody uh, crumples and, uh, or doesn't show up for work, for that matter? So. Very interesting. Now, this takes us towards management. I mentioned to you before, not just employees or staffers are trained during the future force paradigm or the future force system. Train business owners how to innovate while at the same time avoiding risk. Now, this is a very big deal. Uh, it deserves an entire show, frankly, how to innovate uh, while uh, minimizing risk. But, but one thing that is key, and we'll just hit on one aspect right here. In every company, there's no exceptions. You always need to have a daily operating system. This is how we do things. We get things out the door. We bill. This is how we do it. This is our steady thing. But then we also have a separate stream. And that's much more kind of fluid and uh, moving forward kind of. There are different people involved, but that's a separate line of work. So you can't let these innovation initiatives, oh, maybe it's a new product. Maybe we're conducting research that may or may not support the need for a new product, whatever it is, right? But that's going over here while we're doing this over here. 3M devotes 15 to 20% of all worker hours to doing something different, help, helping identify a market segment that hasn't been served before. What can we do? How can we leverage this over here to make that work for them? And so it's kind of open-ended, right? And people are thinking, they're throwing different ideas into the stream of innovation. Now over here, they're not doing that at all. We have a system. This is how we get stuff done on time. This is how we make money over here. So you've got to be able to do both of these kind of simultaneously. And a lot of people don't know how to do that or just don't have enough people around to, to coordinate and shepherd the stream of innovation. We start out thinking we're going to make this, that we learn something here. Oh my God, that's pivotal. 
Let's make it this instead. That would serve far more people. Great, great, great. Go tell the boss. This is the big idea here. See? But meanwhile, this is just going right over here. All right, so that's Future Force. Brand your employee culture with the same flair as your product-based brand. This is a really important idea. I don't know many people that have a branded employee culture. And boy, what, a, what a, an opportunity it is to be able to, to do just exactly that. You gotta have something you can say, look what we do over here, it's special, come work for us, you'll enjoy it more, you'll go further in, in the career as things go uh, forward. So brand, brand your culture. Now, this is a very interesting thing. Be kinetic. Now, when I say kinetic, it's an interesting word. It means, you know, moving, adapting. If you're kinetic, you're, you're, you're adjusting uh, all the time. See? So you want your organization to reflect changes going on around you. They've, competitors have done this. Here's a trend over here. So we're going to be kinetic. We're going to move forward with sensitivity to those ideas. And that means people are going to move from one department to the other. I'm going to help you guys out over here for the next few months to help you with this and that. Now, that's an organization that, that, that is adaptive and is creating value every day because we're not afraid to say, you know, Harry over here, he's really good at this. Susie, we don't want her over there because she's good over here. Okay, move them around. Be kinetic. Next. Getting down to the bottom. Every quarter, get everyone's opinions about new products. Every quarter. That's an appropriate time. And you know, you can do that with uh, old high-tech research tools like Data Burst, or you can do it the old-fashioned way. Just sit down with people uh, over lunch and uh, talk for 45 minutes about various ideas, things they've noticed, it's working, it's not working, whatever it is, right? But you want, these are the people on the ground, right? They're, they're talking to customers, they're customer facing, they're, they're in production. You want all of them to be saying, you know, we need to be doing this and this, I think. You know, we're missing out because we're not doing this and that, right? So, oh, yeah, 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 we got to do all that. See, so there's got to be this constant sense of discovery. And also, you matter, right? Your input as workers, staffers, whatever. You matter here, and we want to know what you are observing. And if you don't observe anything, I don't know, have any good ideas, you know, probably don't belong here, probably don't fit into this culture. And then finally, oh man, this is huge. Embrace a cause or higher purpose that brings out the best in employees. Now this is, this is, this is a huge topic. We could have an entire show built around this, but the idea is social responsibility, who are some people out there that need some help? Maybe there's some way we can support them. Maybe every other Saturday we help them work on their house uh, uh, or maybe uh, help them with their job or provide mentoring or bring them in, show them how we do work around it. million things you can do. A, a really, a lot. There's a ton of stuff all around you. And uh, if you include those people or their issues, it, number one, it broadens your world, all right? <laughs> you begin to realize that there's more to life than uh, uh, kicking out work from eight to five or whatever you're doing. So those are the eight principles around which you can build a really solid and attractive culture. People will come up every day and say, I love this place, I got here on time, I'm ready to go, I got a new role over here, I'm gonna be on that project or on that task force. Awesome, I love it here, future force. That's the catalyst, that's the stimuli, that's the kind of the paradigm around which you can build a customized uh, employee culture. Outstanding, great, excellent. Future Force, don't forget about it. You know, Wild Business Nebraska today is brought to you by the authors of this book. The booklet actually is called 90 Minutes to Take Off. It's kind of a how-to insofar as how to innovate inside your company. It cuts through all the, um, Extraneous stuff gets right down to the bottom line. Graphics and charts and inspirational quotes, by the way. 90 minutes to take off. You can, you can get this if you go to Newbraska, N-E-W-B-R-A-S-K-A.com. This is where the book is, uh, is featured and uh, you can uh, take a closer look that way. Now, 
I'm just going to read something very quick. You'll get a feel for it. And by the way, this is the interior. This is the interior of the book. So on, on each side, there's an artistic or inspirational quote. As you can see, it should be the left side as you look at it. And then on the right side, you'll see text and graphics and uh, charts in particular. But here's some of the uh, inspirational stuff that's inside this. Need, it talks about need seekers, right? These are the people, every company has need seekers. These are people uh, who want to, uh, they want to purchase your product. Need seekers want to be first in the market. They read the customer, respond fast, and then iterate, all right? So these are the people that are curious in your offices. They're saying, you know, maybe if we did this, we could do that. And uh, they're the ones who uncover the need of the uh, end user. Here's another one. Innovation is taking two things that already exist and putting them together in a new way. It's a very important principle. Somebody says, well, how do you come up with all these cool ideas? It's all about connections, right? And these don't seem to connect, so then we do this, and all of a sudden, we've got a new, a new idea right there. And you'll operate just that way, just by sitting down with a half an hour of uh, this particular booklet, and uh, you'll, you'll learn a lot very rapidly, and this will be how you will guide your company forward uh, as you try to think of new products, new services, new leaders, new technology, new systems, new ways to think about growing your uh, your organization. One more time, it's called 90 Minutes to, uh, to Take Off. It's a mini book or booklet about the art and science of innovation. Those are our sponsors today. We appreciate them getting involved with Wild Biz Nebraska, and it is an awesome and an excellent investment to get involved with this particular booklet. Now, thanks for watching us right here on Wild Biz Nebraska. I'm Lynn Hinderocker, and the back end of our show here We've already talked about future force. We've talked about um, you know, workforce development, attracting employees, and kind of getting them fully engaged, present mentally and emotionally in what's going on in your organization, and managing, you know, managing managers or, or, or coaching managers as well. That's a new twist uh, in the world of workforce development. But on the back end of our show tonight, we're talking about trust. Just to ask yourself for a second, just think about some situation, you may be looking for a roofer for your home or your business. You might be looking for a graphic designer, right? You might be looking for uh, somebody who can uh, uh, do some landscaping for you, maybe design the interior of your, uh, of your home or your living room, whatever, whatever it is, right? And you don't really know where to find those people, see? I mean, you can look on the web, obviously, but a lot of that is skewed by SEO challenges and uh, some people don't show up that need to be there and vice versa. So one of the interesting things is you'll pull up maybe multiple vendors, different organizations that say that they are good at whatever it is you're, you're thinking about, right? But now, now how do you choose one? Now, of course, price is always a variable, and if you can't figure out, they all look pretty much the same. They do the same thing. Their websites are kind of similar. We'll, we'll choose that one because he's, he's cheaper, right? We've, we've heard this before. But there's a huge percentage of people probably about 78% that don't necessarily make decisions that way, especially when it involves oh, art or you know, something that is subjective as well. So in the end, it comes down to trust, doesn't it? It comes down to trust. And what causes you to trust somebody? This is a very interesting question, right? If you can meet the owner of the company, which, by the way, isn't always the easiest thing to do and often doesn't happen at all, but if you could and you could find out what their background is and why they're in the business they're in and what prompted it and how they feel about their business, their company, their customer, whatever it is, right? Then you would say, you know, I, can, I, I, I like that guy. I can relate to that guy right there. I understand his father kind of inspired him. And I think he probably puts a lot of heart and soul into his business. Let's, let's hire him, honey. Right? This is how it goes down all the time. So the question is, how do you, as a vendor, maybe you're small, especially the small, they struggle with this, they're overwhelmed. People don't even know about them. They're back in some office somewhere in an industrial park. Nobody, nobody stops by or calls them too much. So they have a real problem presenting their brand, presenting who they are, what they have to offer, what their value is. 
and earning your trust, right? So here's an idea. It's just an idea, but it's something that may, may be able to be done. And I'm going to call it, for theoretic sake, I'm going to call it um, Trust TV, all right, just for fun. And it would be uh, basically an interview, yeah, an interview, like kind of like we do right here on this uh, show occasionally, where you interview the, the owner of a company or maybe the sales manager, whatever it is, but, and you talk to them maybe for, I don't know, eight minutes. We'll, we'll just throw that number out. And the question is always, what's your story? It's not, why are you great? You know, it's not that, right? It's what has brought you to this point and why should we choose you, right? And, and what we find out is that business owners, especially small ones, have a lot of passion, they care a lot, there's stories, there's whole thing, a whole thing in their life that led to them being here uh, available right now. Now, if somebody, a professional, was visiting with them and asking them intelligent questions, when was the turning point in your life? When did you know that you wanted to do this kind of business? What happened then? What was the story that pulled it all together for you? And how do you, how do you think about it now after being in this business five or 10 years these are the things that people want to know. You may or may not be the absolute best, but they want to work with somebody they can trust. They want to walk away and be able to say, he or she is taking care of that. I'm not going to worry about that. All right? So it's a very interesting idea. And I think TV interviews, podcasts maybe, huh? another similar idea. I've got John Doe here. John Doe wants to tell me about his life, his career, his business. We'll synopsize it down here, and you're going to learn something from this man and obviously, maybe his business will, uh, will appeal to you. John, tell us who you are and what you believe in. Yeah, that's what people are interested in today. Value and values. I'm going to put an S at the end of the word value, and there we are, see? So I want you to think about that. You might want to uh, consider uh, uh, finding somebody that does that kind of service, that does that kind of work. And, uh, of course, obviously, they would pay, the client would pay to be interviewed, right? Um, and now, what if, what if they're shy, or what if they don't like going on camera, then we can always do a podcast, right? We can just do an audio podcast. Or uh, maybe they find somebody else that they trust and say, you talk about us. Now, third-party endorsements are, can be very powerful, right? Somebody, I know a guy, he does this. If you're looking for this and this, I know a guy you're going to want to call, blah, 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 right? So, Whatever it is, it could be directly into the camera or it could be an endorsement by a third party, but either one builds an identity and creates trust. And that's, that's the key idea right now, especially if you're a small business person. You want to wake up every day and say, how can I get somebody to see me and trust me? I think there's an answer out there, and I'm going to talk to you again a little bit about that down the road. All right. You know... We've got just a few more minutes. I want to share this with you. This is an update on the state of Nebraska, our economic development, and what's happening around the state. First of all, <clears throat> as you probably know, we have an issue with workforce development. We have a difficulty attracting people. But retaining who we already have is, of course, easier, and, and you got to do that first before you start pulling people from outside the state into Nebraska. There was an interesting study recently sponsored by the Nebraska Community Foundation, NCF, and they uncovered something very interesting. They're talking to young folks, I'm talking about high school kids, asking them, are they going to leave Nebraska? What are their thoughts about staying in the, in the community where they're in right now? And there's been an interesting market change uh, right up to last year. Uh, most of the time, their attitude was, yeah, I can't wait to get, you know, get out of here, uh, you know, graduate and go someplace and begin my career someplace else. Maybe out of state, maybe not, but they were definitely going to leave, right? But this particular study showed uh, an interesting uh, divergence, so to speak, uh, where they were saying, um, uh, you know, essentially, I want to remain here after graduation. I want to, uh, I focus on family, I want to focus on safety. I call these the, co the cozy attributes here in Nebraska. And they were happy, right? Wherever they were, they were happy being there. They kind of wanted to stay there and, uh, and not skitter away, as so many other generations here in Nebraska have done. So it was a very interesting thing. 
In some respects, we see that as a good thing, of course. Um, in other respects, I don't know. It might give us an excuse to do nothing, to just kind of celebrate who we are and here's how we are. And downtown is kind of a mess, but nobody seems to care, so we won't worry, <laughs> worry about that. I'm just, uh, I, I find it so interesting because we utilize this research, maybe, maybe not, but maybe as an excuse to not do too much uh, at all. And that, that, that's a, it's just, a, it's just an off the wall concern that maybe um, we don't need to do any change. We just need to continue doing what, who we are and what we are and, and rely on this feedback to stabilize, to stabilize our population. I'm a little skeptical about that, but uh, nevertheless, uh, it is an interesting twist in grassroots research and we're grateful for the Nebraska Community Foundation and uh, the work that they do. So that's one thing. The other thing is innovation. I've talked again and again, of course, this booklet right here uh, that brought to us by uh, the Nebraska people, um, also talking about innovation. And the question is, do we do enough innovation? Are we already doing a lot of innovation that nobody seems to know about? Uh, do we need to kick it up? As so many grads tell us, a lot of the people they talk to out there that they're, when they're looking for a job, uh, those business owners are not interested in discussing innovation, but there are, there are clearly big exceptions. Huddle in Lincoln, Nelnet in Lincoln, a lot of interesting organizations are in fact, and especially from a technological point of view, innovating. So I'm just not sure whether or not, I mean, we're, we're, we're ranked number 46 uh, out of 50 states insofar as innovation is concerned. So it seems like we have a pervasive problem, either that or we're innovating and not telling anybody about it and, and not elevating that. So I want to end the show today by encouraging you, if you're a chamber member, uh, if you belong to a board of directors uh, in a, your community and you're doing something really cool, let us know right here at Wild Biz Nebraska. You can, uh, you can send them to lynn at nebraska.com so we can talk about we can talk about your innovation. We can talk about your new products. We can talk about the new ideas, the new strategies, the new partnerships. And by the way, we're going to talk on our next show about how to form a partnership, a strategic alliance, and how powerful and valuable that can be if it's the right partner. All right. Thanks for watching Wild Business Nebraska. I'm Lynn Hinderocker. We'll see you next time. But just remember, trust and future force, these are the key ideas that pervade this show and the, the ideas you need to be thinking about as you go forward with your company. Thanks again. We'll talk to you soon.